Today we will look at some parts of my recent mailbag. As usual, I will enhance it with some explanations. This is why the video became too long and the second part will air next week as an exception. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. Today we will have some power-related products in our mailbag. The first one is a very simple cable. USB-C to barrel jack. It looks like an ordinary cable, but it is not. It is a PD cable and PD, as you know, has the capability to switch voltages. And this cable here outputs 9 volts. A very similar looking one is this one here, but this one outputs 12 volts. So how does, how does this work? Inside this connector here is a small chip which requests 9 or 12 volts from the power brick. You can use a power brick like that with batteries or you can use one of those more modern power supplies with USB-C. Both have the capability to deliver 9, 12 or 15 volts and if they are very good, like these two, they can also deliver 20 volt, for example. This is particularly interesting if you have devices with 9 or with 12 volts. You can all feed them with the same power brick. And the best is its price. It's only a little bit more than $1 and a bit of shipping, if I remember right, yes, the $1.66 shipping. But if you order more than one, the shipping does not increase too much. So you get them with 9, 12, 15 and 20 volt. And they are assembled and the quality is okay. I would not say good, ex extremely good, but it's okay. We can check it out. Positive is inside and negative is outside. And you see, 12 volt. And what about the 9 volt? 9 volt. Quite precise. Another interesting aspect is that they do not get hot, even if you draw 3 amps. Because the power is not changed by this connector here, the power is delivered by the power bank. So there is no switching regulator or anything inside. It's just a signal to tell this power brick to deliver 12 or 9 volts. If you ask yourself how this yellow strip came to this barrel jack, here is the answer. I have heat shrink tubes which can be printed by the brother printers. And I always label these things because otherwise you easily can destroy your device if you provide over voltage. These heat shrink tubes are very handy. You get them in several sizes. I will leave a link in the description if you are interested in this. The next one is a development board. Not a small one, a quite a big one with a big chip and lots of I.O. pins, two USB-C connectors, one Ethernet connector and even like the STM32 boards, they have also a debugger and programmer attached to it, which can be broken off if you want to use it for a different board. Now, why do I have this here? If we look at its listing, we see that it is a risk V. And risk V for me is always interesting because I think in the future this will be an important architecture. Uh, onboard debugger, this one here, is also interesting. And the supplier promised that it is Arduino IDE compatible. 
then I ordered it, but unfortunately, so far it is not Arduino compatible. So maybe it will be compatible in the future. For the moment, I will not use it because as you know, on this channel, everything has to be Arduino compatible, but it would be an interesting board because also the pricing is not extremely high. It is 2945, but not for one board, no, for two boards. The shipping is $2.11. So I have two of them in my shelf for the moment. Now you decide if this is interesting for you. I probably would wait for the moment unless you want to play around with RISC-V and can accept their development environment. It has no Wi-Fi, by the way. That is a caveat, but at least it has an Ethernet connection. If you have to switch current, then often you can use a simple relay like this one. It has 10 ampere rating, 250 volt AC and 30 volt DC. These relay switch on if you apply a voltage. Here it is 5 volt and they immediately switch off if you remove the 5 volts. These are different relays. They switch if you apply a voltage from one position to the other. If you remove the voltage, they stay. And this is why they are called B-stable relay. They are not used very often, but sometimes they are quite handy. But what happens if you have to switch higher voltages or higher currents? Then we often use these relay types. They have a rating up till 380 volt AC and 25 ampere. So they are much, much stronger than those. Of course, they are also bigger. And these are solid state, so they have no mechanics inside. But as I said, they have 380 volt AC. So they only work for AC and not for DC probably. I don't know, so let's check. So I have a very simple setup. Here I can apply a voltage to switch it on or off. 3 to 32 volts. For the moment I have 14 volts here, but it's off for the moment. There is no LED lighting here. Here I have the power supply, which feeds a 1 ohm resistor, so we have quite uh, low resistance and then I have the switch here which should switch power in this resistor. Now I switch the power on. It has 14.4 volts output but no current is flowing through the resistor. Now I switch the relay on. It is on and we have 5 ampere flowing through this one ohm resistor here. Quite a lot of current and it gets hot now, so I want to switch it off and I switch now the relay off. Now it's off, but the current is still 5 amperes, so this one did not switch off. I can switch it on, can switch it off, switch it on, switch it off. Doesn't change anything, so this relay does not work for DC. I have to switch off the whole power. If I switch it on, now it's switched off. Why is this still working for AC? Because AC is a sine wave which always crosses zero and during these zero crossings, these kind of relay can switch off. But if you have DC, we do not have a zero voltage crossing and this is why they stay on all the time. They do not use transistors, they use triacs inside, so a different semiconductor which does not switch off automatically. It has to have zero voltage and then it switches off. But what to do now? Here I have a different one, similar size than this and similar making than this, but it has 100 ampere and volt DC. 5 to 220 volt DC. So this is a DC relay. 
The control is similar from 3 to 32 volt DC. So let's check out this one. By the way, I mounted it on this aluminium carrier because if you have high currents, it can get a little bit warm. And so I bought this one. It's an overkill, I know. Here, polarity counts, by the way. It's minus and it's plus. So that is important, otherwise it will not work. So let's switch it on now. We still have, we have the same 14.4 volts and now I switch it on. And I have also this four point, uh, this five ampere. So perfect, it is on. Now, last time it did not work when I wanted to switch it off. So have a look at the LED here. The LED is gone and it switched off. So let's check again. On. Off. Perfect, exactly as expected. So for high voltages and high currents, these are definitely uh, a good choice. They are a bit bigger than, they, than these, but uh, let's have a look at the listing if they are also much more expensive. So this is the listing and the price is surprisingly $5 for this high current and high voltage rating. And shipping is $3.70. So all in all, it's less than $10. I think this is a very good deal and I will show you where I use it. Here is the battery with a BMS and the voltage converter down to 13.8 volt. And here is our switch. This is by the way an interesting charger for 24 volt life FEPO4. It has 28, it has 29.2 volt maximum charging, but you can select the current you want to charge up till 25 amps. Recently I bought eight of those but batteries they are quite heavy they have 300 amp hours and 3.2 volts i checked them roughly my bms showed a little bit less 298 ampere but uh, maybe this is also not very precise but this is uh, absolutely good for me perfect and uh, because these are real beasts here it takes a very long time to charge them and to discharge them this is their listing they sell it now as 304 amp hours i do not know why and i purchased eight pieces they were roughly 1600 dollars free shipping and the interesting thing is they are already stocked here in europe so the delivery time was roughly one week and here is something i never understood why it was made frankly until I bought it. And this is this small hot break. It is incredibly expensive for its size, but it's extremely well made. It's really a very, very high quality product here. And what is it? It is just a hot plate here, a very small hot plate. So I saw, I thought, why do they build a tool with such a small hot plate? It cannot be used to solder anything because most of the PCBs are too big for that. And then I had my first problem. This is a board I made together with Robert and it will contain two transceivers on this side and here an ESP S3. And when I had a problem, I had to replace this module. Now, how do you do this? It has not only soldering here, soldering here and soldering here. No, Robert placed also very small parts here and here quite close to the module. And this is not easy. And now comes this small plate and it fits exactly like that. You see, 
that is the trick so it is not bad that it is small and not usable it is extremely usable because it is small so it is a completely different idea this is for desoldering in general and not for soldering now do you want to spend uh, nearly 100 dollars for such a tool i don't know but i have to admit i like it here is the listing it is $83 and at least it's free shipping. It is powered by a USB-C adapter and this one is also power delivery PD. So it increases also the power and can not be used with a standard power supply without PD. And you see, I keep it in this tiny box here like a jewel very nice this was all for today as always you find all the relevant links in the description the second part will air in one week i hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you if true please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence thank you bye